Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round one of the Aim Chess US, US Rapid Preliminaries. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So. Uh, and uh, like I said, this is only a game from round one, so we're going to dive straight into it. But I will mention it's the uh, ninth and the, the last event of the $1.6 million Meltwater Champions Chess Tour uh, before the great final. And these are rapid games, 15 minutes for all moves with a 10 second increment starting from move one. So we're going to discuss the tournament a little bit more as we continue the coverage, but this this is game one and it's already quite an interesting one. So Magnus with the white pieces uh, opens with uh, d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Wesley, c4, uh, that's not a c4, we have c4, e6, uh, bishop to f4, uh, and now d5. And interestingly here we have captors, knight captors attacking the bishop and after bishop to g3, already as of move 5 we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how Wesley deals with this novelty. Uh, we have c5 uh, challenging the center, uh, as uh, why not? Uh, we have e4 by Magnus grabbing the center, attacking the knight, and the knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to d2, already uh, offering a, a, a clean pawn, and while it's possible to capture this, uh, Wesley decides against it. Wesley just continues developing. He plays knight to c6 and now e5, attacking the knight here, knight to d7 and now knight to g to f3. Again, uh, asking uh, Wesley, are you maybe interested in a pawn? But Wesley still uh, has his doubts about it, but now he captures the pawn. He plays C captures on D4. Uh, we have bishop to C4 by Magnus, and now bishop to E7. We have castles uh, and Wesley castles. We have rook to C1. Now Wesley uh, here... Uh, uh, well, being up a pawn, uh, but Magnus is up in development. We have knight to c5, uh, and now uh, a3. This knight could be a nuisance here. Uh, this pawn could come to d3 at some point. It could be very well defended, and it's a pass pawn, so you have to do something about it. The queen could be coming to b6, uh, challenging the b2 pawn. So here Magnus plays a3, and he prepares b4 to kick this knight away from this excellent square. Uh, Wesley, of course, stops this. He plays a5, uh, and now knight to b3, offering a trade here. And while you could capture this uh, and uh, try uh, and uh, keep your pawn, uh, captures, captures, uh, Wesley again decides against this. He he plays b6, uh, and now what, uh, what what does Magnus play here? He Well, he reclaims his pawn. He plays knight b captures on d4, knight captures on d4, we have knight captures, and now bishop to b7. So Wesley does not want his extra pawn, uh, but he has uh, developed his queen side very nicely. The bishop has been developed, the queen will now move and the rooks will uh, occupy perhaps the, the open c and d file. Uh, but Magnus says, all right, now my bishop, pawn and queen are eyeing that d6 square, so knight to b5, we're bringing this knight to d6, and uh, well, that's going to be just uh, uh, either a monster knight or black will have to capture at some point, and then Magnus will get a, a very nice pass pawn on d6. Uh, so here you could trade queens, but Wesley decides against it. Wesley plays knight to e4, he wants to challenge the dark square bishop here, and now Magnus simply puts his knight on d6, a beautiful square, and like I said, capturing here, uh, although possible, maybe gives Magnus uh, too, too great of a pass pawn. <clears throat> Uh, so here we have queen to b8, uh, uh, not interested in capturing this knight. So queen to b8 and now comes queen to d4 by Magnus. A beautiful centralizing move with the queen. Uh, although there is a there is a really funky line with knight captures on f7. Point is if rook captures you're going to capture on e6 with the bishop. You've uh, sacrificed a knight but you've grabbed two pawns and you're going to pick up the rook as well. Uh, the problem is if black captures with the king and defends the pawn then you have to go into something like queen to g4 now attacking the d6 pawn uh, but after knight to c6 it seems like everything is perfectly fine for black but still could be very dangerous after f4 f5 but it's uh, uh maybe something you don't do if you don't have to do it so magnus continues by simply uh developing centralizes his queen and now uh wesley plays also a very interesting move and that's b5 now, what's uh, his idea behind this pawn sacrifice? Uh, well, he wants uh, uh, white to capture it. Now, if you capture it with the knight, uh, then, well, uh, you, you no longer have this beautifully posted knight here. And if rook to d8, uh, we're going to play knight back to d6, and now we're going to capture. But now we have an extra piece here on the d file. And after everything gets traded off, captures, captures, uh, you don't really have any, any worries here. Uh, what's... Uh, uh, really interesting is after b, uh, b5 to capture with the bishop, and that's what Magnus does. He plays bishop captures on b5, and now 
uh, you could go for rook to d8. Uh, again, it's uh, it's possible, for example, after rook f to d1, now we're capture on d6, and after e captures, we capture on g3, h captures, and then, unfortunately, you don't have bishop captures here by capturing this bishop, uh, because white will play rook to c7, and he will have just uh, too, too strong of a... Uh, a pig on the seventh rank. Uh, so here you would probably go bishop d5, attack this bishop, and now you would have a nice double attack uh, on this d6 pawn. So it, it could be played, uh, but he decides against it. After bishop captures on b5, he decides to go for the bishop first, knight captures on g3, h captures, and now bishop to d5. So now attacking the bishop and uh, enjoying this double attack on the knight on d6. Uh, we have bishop to c6 by Magnus, attacking the rook here, and Wesley, of course, first eliminates the knight. The bishop captures on d6. Now, you can't capture the rook. If you capture the rook, then Wesley will capture the pawn on e5. It's defended by the queen, and uh, you will also now lose this bishop here, so black will just be winning. So after bishop captures on d6, we have e captures on d6, and now we have rook to a6. Uh, getting the rook out of harm's way, we have a capture on d5, captures uh, on d5, and now not recapturing, but first rook captures on d6. Now the bishop cannot move, and the Wesley is of course hoping to just recapture here with, with the pawn. Uh, Magnus plays rook to c5, so now uh, you can't really... Uh, uh, keep your pawn uh, because, uh, well, your a5 pawn is hanging. And if you try something like rook here, still we're just going to capture on a5. And after rook captures on d5, rook captures, sorry, rook captures on d5, rook captures, we're going to play queen to c3, and we're going to enjoy two connected pass pawns on the queen side. So, of course, Wesley is not interested in playing against this. So, after rook to c5, we have rook captures on d5, and now rook captures. We have uh, e captures on d5, and now queen captures on d5. Queen captures on b2 and queen captures on a5. So after all is said and done, we have a queen and a rook against a queen and a rook. Both players three pawns on the king side, but Magnus has an extra pass pawn on the queen side. It's an outside pass pawn. So of course, uh, it's very dangerous by its nature. But he has doubled pawns on the king side, so maybe... Uh, something for Wesley to, to, to utilize later on. Uh, we have g6, uh, you want to bring your rook into the game, so you want to create a, some breeding square for your king, and now queen to b4 by Magnus. He offers a queen trade, and offers to go straight into rook and pawn endgame, and Wesley declines this. We have queen to f6, and now of course Magnus starts pushing his pass pawn. We have a4, uh, and rook to c8 now. Uh, rook to a8, also possible. Wesley decides to, to go rook to c8. Uh, we have a5 by Magnus, and now h5. Uh, we have queen to a4, putting a queen behind the pass pawn. Now you want to start pushing it, and now rook to c6. So now Wesley's queen and rook are guarding the a6 square, so it's going to be very hard for Magnus to advance this pawn even further. So what do you do? Queen to a1. Again, Magnus offers a, <clears throat> a queen trade, and you could go for this, but after captures and captures, the problem is you have to immediately block this pawn with rook to a6, and then you have a really passive rook. White has a, well, a much more active rook, and you're just going to start by bringing your king into the game. Of course, black will have to either go with the king to the queen side to help out with this pawn, uh, which will not be possible because then the white king will just gobble up all of the queen side pawns. So uh, you, you would have to, you know, cho choose between uh, <laughs> the, the lesser evil here. So instead, Wesley goes king to g7. He says, all right, let's trade queens, but then my king will be uh, a much more active king. So here, rook to b1. First, Magnus brings the rook into the game, and now queen captures on a1. Now Wesley trades uh, as he won a tempo with king to g7. Seven. So rook captures on a1. Now again, Magnus ready to start pushing his past a pawn, and of course rook to a6. So we basically get the same idea that we discussed. Only Wesley now has uh, well, he he saved the tempo with, with uh, his king. So f3, Magnus now ready to start bringing his king into the game, and we have uh, king to f6, king to f2. We have king to e5, and now king to e3. Uh, we have king to d5, Wesley now has to play something, but you don't really want to play anything. You uh, really prefer to have your king opposite the white king, but you have to play something. So king f4, and now f6, preventing the white king from going any further. Uh, we have g4 by Magnus, he says, I have a double g pawn, so why not just uh, trade one of them. Uh, we have captures, captures, and now king to e5. Wesley says, uh, thou shall not pass, but Magnus says, nope, that's, that's really not a problem. Uh, he plays f4, chases away Wesley's king, and now king to e6. 
uh, if you if you try and remain on the e file, for example, with king to e4, uh, we can always chase it away with a move like rook to a rook to e1, rook to a4, <clears throat> uh, and so on. So here, Magnus uh, wastes a move, and he does so very nicely. He plays rook to a2, and now the problem is, uh, if you move the rook, we're just gonna continue pushing our pawn. Uh, if you make any pawn ad advance, it only favors white, and uh, well, you, basically you can only move your king, and this is what Wesley does. Uh, we have rook to e, a uh, king to e7, and now king to f3. Uh, we have king to d6, now comes king to e4 and king to e6. Wesley again gains opposition, uh, but Magnus says, I can always waste a move with rook to e1, whereas you can't really waste any moves. So king to d6, and only now, after the king moved, uh, we have f5 by Magnus. And now the problem is Wesley can't really play g5, uh, because we can always move around with our king. King f3, and if king, f king e5 going after the pawn, we play king g4, we defend it. If king to e4 trying to remain here uh, attacking this f5 pawn, we simply chase the king away, rook e1 check, king d5, and now rook to e6. And this is now uh, game over for, for black. Uh, if you trade, then white get, has his uh, past a pawn, which is of course completely winning. And if you trade here, then we capture on f6, we capture on g5, and then we have two connected pass pawns on the king side, uh, which is of course winning for Magnus. So instead, after f5, Wesley trades, we have captures, captures, and now king to e7. Uh, continuing uh, defending this uh, f6 pawn, king to g6, and now king to e6, keeping the opposition, but now rook to e1 with check. Uh, we have king to d7, and now, uh, okay, now the rook is defending the f6 pawn, but now just g4. So what do you play here? Uh, if you capture on a5, that's a problem. Captures, captures, and it's basically the same uh, endgame. This is completely winning. The black king cannot help out. The rook is completely controlling the e-file, and this is straight out winning. So after g4, we have king to d8 by Wesley. Now comes king to f7. Now, after this pawn falls, and it will, the king will control these three crucial squares for this pawn to be promoted to a queen. Uh, and here, for example, if king to d7, we're just going to play rook e7 check. Now, if you go here, we deliver check, pick up the rook. So it'd have to go up the board, and only then we play rook e6. And now black has nothing better, but we get pretty much the same endgame. We're just going to escort our pawn up the board, and that's it. Uh, so after king to f7, we have rook to d6. Wesley is now forced to, to move the rook. Uh, and now uh, comes a very interesting move, and that is rook to e4. Uh, rook to e4 with the idea of defending the g4 pawn. If you just try rook to f1 going after the f6 pawn, then Wesley has this rook d4, and now it's, uh, well, it's not as clean as it should be. So after rook to d6, like I said, rook to e4, and now there's really no good move here. Now you are playing uh, rook to f4, and that's uh, that's all there is. We have rook to c6, Wesley wastes a move, but now rook to d4 check, king to c8, uh, moving the king further away for, from the pass pawn, and now rook to f4. And it was in this position on move 55 that Wesley so resigned the game, and a very nice victory for Magnus Carlsen in round one of the uh, first round of this of this very nice event. Uh, here again, you resign. It's pretty much the same thing. You have to make a move. There really are no good moves. If you deliver a check, we pick up the pawn with the king. Then we escort our pawn up the board. And if you go after this pawn, not much different. We capture with the rook. And after rook captures on a5, yes, you are guarding g5, but simply rook f5. And that's it. Once we deliver one check, the king will move, king to f8, and now we just escort our pawn up the board, and that's it. So, a uh, very nice game by Magnus, and very nice surprise for Wesley, uh, creating a new game already as of move 5. Uh, we'll continue covering this tournament. If you have any favorites of your own, do use hashtag suggestion, and I will go through them and hopefully cover them. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tom Derolo, Nirajan Koirala, uh, Alain Goyet, uh, David Kimura, and Vlad Ularu for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this very nice event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.